I'd like to start off by outlining the agenda for today. Um, we will start off with a brief presentation by our partner here, Technologies. Uh, then we will have our panel discussion for about an hour, followed by audience Q&A. Uh, I'd like to introduce our speakers for our audience. Our presenter for today will be Ms. Sulaiza Sapto, uh, Senior Product Marketing Lead for Transport and Logistics at Here Technologies. Sulaiza is based out of Singapore and uh, has nearly 20 years of experience in product management, product marketing, and product development from a number of reputed multinational brands in the field of electronics and communication. Her presentation today will be on making a last mile in the e-commerce world. For the panel discussion, uh, we have five uh, eminent speakers from the industry. Uh, first up, we have Mr. Raj Kiran Kanagala, uh, who is Senior Vice President and Group Head, Emerging Business Units, Strategy and Business Development at TCI Group, where he's been working since 2006. He's currently involved in projects encompassing strategy and growth initiatives within the areas of technology, innovation, brand, marketing, sourcing, and HSE as his core competencies. Raj has an exposure of over 14 years in the domain of supply chain, logistics, and transportation, and has an overall experience of over 25 years working in various roles in international and domestic markets. TCI Group probably needs no introduction, is one of India's leading integrated multimodal supply chain and logistics solution providers. We also have with us Mr. Rajiv Bhattacharya, uh, who is COO of V Express. Um, he comes with two decades of experience in managing profit center operations, involving sales and marketing, budgeting, customer relationship management, process optimization, logistics and supply chain management, both in India and abroad. A quick word about V Express. It is a division of V Trans and is one of the fastest growing brands in the small and large parcel delivery segment in the country. Our next speaker is Dr. Amitabh Saran, uh, who is CEO of Alti Green Propulsion Labs. Um, he comes with over 28 years of experience with multinational institutions and startups as part of a career focused on delivering innovative solutions to consumers. Passionate about clean energy and automobiles, Dr. Saran founded Alti Green, which develops high efficiency electric mobility solutions in last mile transport for India and other emerging economies. A true embodiment of made in India and made for India, Alti Green has been designing, developing, testing, and manufacturing proprietary EV drive trains and three wheelers. They also work closely with other automobile OEMs to enable their future EV launches in India. Next up, uh, we have Mr. Abhijit Sengupta, Director and Head of Business for the SARC region at Here Technologies. Abhijit is based out of Singapore and brings over two decades of experience in sales and business development, product management, and product operations. Our final speaker as part of the panel is Mr. Amrit Pajpai. Uh, who is COO of Waycool Foods and Products. Amrit comes with over 14 years of hands-on experience in strategic planning, operations, and key enterprise functions. He has a proven track record in, in driving transformation in the areas of supply chain, warehouse, inventory, and logistics, including outbound, inbound, CKD, and SKD operations. Prior to joining Waycool, Amrit has held key positions uh, with Tata Motors and Ashok Leyland in India, and has also led strategic projects globally. Vehicle Foods is India's largest agri supply chain startup, focusing on food development and distribution. So Amrit will bring in a unique perspective um, in today's discussion. Uh, lastly, to moderate the panel discussion, we have Mr. Ajay Srinivasan, who is a director at Crystal Research. Ajay has over 17 years of experience in the field of research, financial analysis, and forecasting. He presently leads the customized research practice pertaining to the Indian automotive and banking and financial services sector. So we thank all of you again for your time and for being part of our session. Few housekeeping information for our uh, audience. We will take up audience questions after the panel discussion. So please keep your questions coming. You can share them in the Q&A window on your screen and we will take as many as possible towards the end of the session. Apart from uh, the Zoom platform, the session is also being live streamed on Motor India's official video channel on YouTube. Without taking any longer, I now hand over to Sulaiza for her presentation. Thank you.
Thank you, Bala. Thanks, everyone. And a very good afternoon to everyone. And uh, we appreciate the fact that we are being given a chance to share a brief introduction on here technologies. And basically, what's our contribution, especially towards making a last mile in the e-commerce world? Now, who is here technologies? Maybe some of you may not know. We are a location data and technology platform company. And we help our customers to understand and model a world that is always moving and changing. And we produce what we call a digital representation of reality. It's a map, but it's much more than what we conventionally think of as a map. Because it's living, dynamic, and continuously updating. And covering not just roads, but more and more of the world in three dimensions like buildings, factories, corporate campuses, stores, airports, and docks. And increasingly, it incorporates the stuff that moves, like vehicles, goods, IT sensors, and people. And this representation of reality is the basis for us and our customers to understand how people, places, and things connect together. And we've been around for more than three and a half decades. Well, actually, in 2018, you know, for the first time, we occupied the top spot in each of the major location platform rankings by the well-known market research companies, analytics companies out there. And even in April 2021 this year, we are again ranked by these companies when we secure the number one spot in our position in openness, vision and growth in the location platform space. But what do we want to contribute towards to? Now we can see there's a huge opportunities within the logistic industries. In 2020 alone, globally, it is a US 5.4 trillion. And half of this comes from land transport. And this grows to 70% when combined with air, sea, and inland transport. And when you look at growth rates, the fastest growing area is from CEP, which is Korea Express and Parcel at 7%. But pandemic accelerated this growth. And with a boom in e-commerce, a growth of 24%, consumer delivery expectations combined with COVID-19 restrictions, we observe some key trends. So firstly, the diversification of products sold online, like groceries, pharmacy, and more. And secondly, at the receiver end, customers are more demanding of last mile delivery experience, including shipment visibility, like where's my package? precise ETA, so when can I get my package, while keeping manageable costs. And this puts pressure on suppliers, especially when they must reconfigure their last mile fleet to deal with demand shifts and spikes. So last but not least, you know, customers have started to look out for alternative delivery solutions. For example, like on-demand delivery, curbside deliveries, or even pickup deliveries. And when we look into the e-commerce, it has transformed the way business is done in India. Now, the Indian e-commerce market is now expected to grow to 200 billion by 2026. And when you look into some of these statistics, we see more and more users going into e-shopping because of the increase in internet and smartphone penetration. But what does it do? And in here, we recognize there's a need to help to address these logistic changes, particularly in the last mile, because 50% of the total cost of the delivery comes to the last mile. And to that, at Here Technologies, we develop a simple full service application with a straightforward pricing that can help end users of fleet operators, like the drivers, dispatchers, fleet managers, and especially managing their last mile fleet, fleet operations, because it's a full service product that helps you to plan your operations from job planning to delivery. And we easily have a plan to us to match your daily jobs to the most suitable vehicles and workers. And having the ability to schedule or pre-plan beforehand with specific fleet attributions will help drivers a lot. Let's take an example, the truck attributes. You know, there's some legal restrictions physical restrictions, loading docks, truck PYs. And these are the important attributions that we have to adhere because we want to make sure the right job suited to the right conditions. And having this parameter helps in terms of avoiding 
like fines, uh, incidents, especially on the road, and especially during the freight movement. So fleet planners can also create complex tour plans with detailed directions on how to access a location to optimize the driver's time and improve ETAs and do more jobs at a time. And with this service that we provide, we, they can access the list of jobs against a pool of resources. And they can create a matrix of delivery runs for the day. And managing this helps the fleet managers to optimize their operations well. And sometimes during the transit, circumstances change. You know, whether it's a traffic delay or even a delay at border crossing, an incident or a storm, or even a misplaced cargo. So the logistic manager struggles to identify the location of the goods and in turn can provide, cannot provide, sorry, to accurate predictions for arrival for the customers or even the next mode of transportation. Now this disruption requires rerouting, which oftentimes occurs by the driver and ends in delays, fines and frustrations. Now here provides an end-to-end -end solution to track high value goods across modes of transportation or we can even integrate that with some of the leading logistic systems to provide more detail and accuracy of the location of the goods and potential points of disruptions. So using a single platform to centralize this operation does help because in the last mile context, we have seen fleets moving proof of delivery to digital to sign on gloves and adopting COVID safe methodologies and contact free deliveries where driver need to be provided with the tools help to manage the handover. And this also gives the customer transparent visibility and especially a proof of de delivery that close the freight loop. And this can be accessed via tablets or even deployed on any devices. But being connected always well on the road is not a given thing, especially if you're in a location where there's no data network. So our last mile solution allows driver to download the maps and even go offline and will still be able to navigate while they're offline to their destination. So when the network is then available, they can get real-time traffic information and will be able to reroute accordingly. And finally, fleet and logistic managers are always looking to understand the driver performance and identify more effective routing options because with the post-trip analysis, you can see whether drivers adhere to the road regulations, followed the route you generated for them, or even ran into unforeseen delays. Because some companies may also want to provide coaching or even usage-based insurance based on fact-oriented data regarding the driver performance. So in all, what's the key value proposition that we want to bring to the table? especially with this service, because we want to optimize the operational efficiency and reduce the cost to the, our customers. And we want to enable features that help not just the fleet managers, but the drivers in order to retain the workforce and provide driver satisfaction, plus safety. Because with a safe, efficient drivers performing the last mile service effectively, it will then naturally increase the service quality to our customers and consumers. So with that, I would like to thank you for your time today and encourage you to download our latest report in partnership with Frost & Sullivan that's discussing the challenges and opportunities in fleet management, asset tracking and shipment visibility. So please scan the QR code on the screen and I'd like to thank you again for your time. Then I'd like, let me just hand it off to our moderator. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Solaiza, for a wonderful presentation. It was indeed a very uh, good overview about uh, last mile uh, distribution. Now I'd like to open the uh, panel discussion. So I will start off with uh, uh, Mr. Rajkaran. Uh, welcome to the discussion, Mr. Rajkaran. Uh, so as Solaiza outlined, we are seeing burgeoning growth in e-commerce. Uh, and today, last mile delivery is not only limited to the larger cities, but also the smaller cities are also very rapidly gaining ground as far as e-commerce is concerned. Uh, as one of India's largest logistics service providers, 
how has TCI adapted to the changing needs of customers uh, in the last mile segment and further with the e-commerce segment uh, holding very strong growth potential, how are you addressing the specific needs uh, of customers in this segment when it comes to last mile uh, distribution? Sure. Uh, thanks, Ajay. And first and foremost, uh, many thanks to Motor India and Year Technologies for having uh, me on the panel as and as you all know, representing TCI group. Uh, what I'll do is that, uh, first is I'll uh, stick to the topic which states optimizing last mile. Uh, so first I'll uh, put my neck out and say that it's extremely difficult. Uh, today at around 11.30, I had a uh, VC with a head of a supply chain of a very large FMCG brand. His problem is what we are all discussing. And I believe the audience also knows that how do you optimize from a fulfillment center, whether it is an e-com or a FMCG or a consumer durable or no matter any vertical, how do you ensure that the truck belly space is optimized? So that's where the capacity utilization comes. And uh, somewhere I would also like to put a challenge to Suleiza that uh, we don't believe that 50% cost is last mile cost. Uh, the long haul costs, the haulage costs are far greater than the last mile cost. So 50%, uh, I don't know from where that number has come. It's not the case. The cost is not the aspect in last mile. It is how well you service your customer or consumer. So in e-commerce, you'll say consumer or even if it's a B2B platform, it is customer. Or for any uh, brand, it's a customer part. Let's look at the fundamentals now. The fundamentals is that e-commerce, Ajay, while you're asking us, only constitutes around 4.5% to 5% of the total retail spend of India. So while the hype is obviously because of the startups and the big boys entering into India and FDI coming, uh, the glamour is there. But the truth, as you asked in the question, is in the tier 2, 3, and the rural. So whenever we are servicing last mile, it's not that it's new. Let's go back to first A, fundamentals and the evolution of last mile. So I'll try to answer then eventually the optimization. The fundamental is that the demand is driven by customer or consumer historically or always. And you would fulfill that demand through a supply chain. That's what you want to do. The weakest link is the last mile because obviously the customer or consumer is going to be extremely demanding, especially in digital age where they want transparency and that thanks to e-commerce or the startups, they have brought in the transparency. But the challenges always remain. For example, in India, the addresses are not well defined. You know, you, it's not really a good system where you can identify a lane or a particular address so easily. Uh, here, technologies Abhijit would do that well. So thus, the biggest aspect is how do you address that, that location correctly? We always have been saying behind this temple, ahead of this school. So that's been our location mapping. Uh, and even today, uh, whenever we speak to any delivery boy, when he's about to enter your premise to service you, he typically calls you and says, I'm nearby. Can you please tell me the exact location? So somewhere that gap still remains historically, though we've, you know, over time improved on it, whether it's uh, something what here has brought or Google has brought or anybody else. So the fundamentals always remain that in, in an Indian context, delivery is a challenge. Truck belly fulfill, fulfillment is a challenge. Uh, Rajiv will echo that. What has brought about the change is the technology, the tax regime. We all talk so much on technology, but the fact that GST brought in a uniform platform for us to enable last mile, we should never forget that the GST is enabling last mile. If you all remember the VAT regime, it was so complex. We had many hubs, many tax documents to be created. So let's not forget the role of GST out here. So we should always uh, you know, be cognizant of the taxation. Uh, most importantly is uh, the expectation of a customer or a consumer of when he wants the delivery. So these are the fundamentals. Now, if you see uh, today uh, and you talk to the FMCG boys, 
uh, they are one of the masters when they look at last mile in the rural side, which is we call as the Bharat of India. But if you see the GDP spend, the GDP spent in the rural parts of India is only around 30, 40 percent. 60 to 70 percent of the GDP spent of India is in urban. So if you want to define last mile and we want to say how last mile will go through, it is the urban logistics what we have to address first while we are also addressing the rural. Please understand the consumer is more demanding in the urban side than on the rural side. The rural side is an experience for them. They are wowed by whatever we do, whether it is a POS. Okay. POS is also a major aspect of the last mile because end of the day, the way you're going to sign off a document, a payment at a POS level when you are delivering the last mile is critical. So that's another angle what I wish to do. So the city side is the most critical aspect, urban logistics. It's a constraint. By the way, it's a, a global topic by World Bank in India because your 67 to 70% GDP evolves in these metros and mini metros. So while we are trying to address tier two, tier three, the challenges rise, right, you know, rest in urban logistics. To sum up, I put some points, the way the evolution has happened is that if you ever would have known that Unilever first started Sangam Direct way back in the year 2003, 2004, they were way ahead of the curve and they were delivering directly to the consumers from a fulfillment center and to create pit shops and do tote delivery at a unit level and collect cash or credit card or even Sodexo or any other coupon. Food. So the point is that this is not new to India. We have all have been doing. The matter of fact is that we should not be overhyped by e-commerce. The the traditional industries of automobile, FMCG, consumer durables, the big multinational brands, the engineering companies, the EPC players, the medical devices, now currently vaccines and logistics, all is nothing but last mile. All have been doing a phenomenal service in India. What we need is the marrying of technology, the vehicle aspect of it, the way you're going to drive your logistics to bring the cost down, and finally, the way you're going to manage the customer expectation. The issue is how you want to ensure that the customer expectation is not uniform across the value chain for all verticals. Because when you are having food, it's different to when you're getting a fan delivered to a, a any other product. So what we see as an ecosystem developing is that this is all now currently fragmented. They need a uniform code to tie up between the fulfillment center to the last mile in terms of the consumer or customer and the return logistics. We need a uniform code or uniform platform. Until we don't have, we're going to have challenges in optimizing. We don't see that the optimization is going to come easily till the time we are a bit opaque in terms of our business models because nobody wants to share the data with each other. So this is what I wish to share with respect to the evolution of last mile that is it's going on for many years. It rests in urban, not so much in tier two, tier three. Tier two, tier three is more of the cost and network and uh, we need to have a uniform code. So this is what, uh, as a starting comment, I would like to say, Ajay, over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Raskaran. And I think uh, you literally took my mind back to the days of Sangam Direct which was possibly the first uh, attempt at really reaching the consumer directly. And you're also right that uh, uh, last mile distribution has been a challenge for quite some time. Maybe it has got more uh, uh, accentuated right now because of our expectations as consumers also evolving very fast. Uh, and uh, we also focusing a lot of effort on trying to minimize wastages as well uh, across the supply chain. Uh, so I will next go to uh, Mr. Rajiv Bhattacharya. Uh, VTrans uh, has created a separate entity, B Express, which shows the focus on the last mile segment. Uh, what kind of differentiated solutions has B Express been uh, brought to the table for the customers? Uh, what are the customer segments you're targeting in the Express space? And uh, are there drivers which you're seeing beyond uh, e-commerce? Uh, and if I look at the segment, uh, that is the uh, 
contact has generally become the new more and what role technology is playing in the same thanks ajay for giving the opportunity uh well uh, we express is primarily into a b2b uh, express delivery business so basically we are uh, carrying products whatever you can think of right from air conditioner to a water water purifier to everything so uh, uh now when you come to a last mile delivery now the challenges of e-commerce is very different than the challenges we have in a b2b scenario because in a e-commerce you have a on demand demand kind of a service where your location is still more in more finite whereas in our case it is not a on demand it is it is actually it is coming from the uh, sender to the receiver and it is not always that we have the gps coordinates of the receiver it is always uh, uh, because because if you are not logging into the system and you are ordering it is it is actually through the uh, traditional way of placing an order and and then then so, so many times the gps coordinates are may not be there in the database and that's where what mr rajkiran said the guy will call up and say where is your location is it next to the temple or behind the building so that kind of a scenario does happen so uh, so that's that challenge still remains with us with the b2b category players and and uh, we we still trying to find out uh, solutions like we we are tying up with saas uh, companies who can provide us more uh, reliable coordinate uh, data so that we can have more uh, finite information and more routing uh, optimizations um, because without that pin code is a very big subject very big area today in a in a gps scenario and optimization you cannot actually do it at gps pin code so we are trying to optimize and and make our system also learn through the through the databases through the coordinates we use uh, through the mobile devices we try to marry them and trying to build up the uh, learning uh, phase in the system so this is a machine learning which is in progress which is which is still taking time to uh, learn and, and 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 make the system more stronger to uh, understand and optimize the last mile uh, and again i i agree with uh, mr rajkiran when he said that uh, in a b2b scenario uh, the mid mile is the most expensive that mid mile constitutes anything from 40% to 50% of your cost uh, last mile will will do about uh, it, it will vary from 8 to 12% depending upon different locations and geographies so uh, the last mile cost per se is not that high what what we talk the initial phase in, in a b2b scenario was in a in a b2b and a b2c scenario it is definitely that's a very big chunk of cost because it is a per unit smaller deliveries which you are doing some and that's where the unit cost goes up now in in terms of the segment as i said the segment we cater is generally uh, we, we are also playing a big role in the e-commerce but again that is mainly like the vendor to the dcs dcs to dc those kind of uh, uh, models we are doing now because of this uh, particular model of uh, dc to dc and vendors to dc now a unique pattern has come up with appointment deliveries now because of the shortage of space and the scheduling of uh, the the cycle of the inventory kept in the warehouses so there's a schedule appointment which goes and and, and that becomes a lot of lot of time it's tricky it's a, it's a tricky affair particularly in the seasonal time where uh, because the appointment because the vendors are sending advance so that there's no gap in terms of the supply chain for uh, the e-commerce companies and it keeps piling on in our warehouses and and then you are doing the deliveries with a delay of 7 days and 10 days kind of a scenario so that's a new challenge which has come up. so we have to keep a backup storage in our uh, warehouses so that we can cater to those uh scheduled uh, deliveries of of this e-commerce uh, companies so that's another challenge which is uh, posing us and, and this is round the clock so it is no more 9 8 to 8 to 5 or 8 to 6 kind of scenario it is a round the clock amazon takes delivery round the clock flipkart takes round the clock so we have to keep our uh, uh, the last mile delivery on a 24 by 7 cycle is 7 not even 6 7 cycle we have to keep so that's definitely is a big challenge which 
and we have changed our our model accordingly so that we are able to cater to those uh, requirements um other other than that one of the major segment we cater is the electric electric uh, is uh, uh, com components lt and st both uh, that constitutes a very big part of our business then of course lifestyle is another big segment we cater i'm just talking of the major segments we we cater and then the it products and it peripherals also constitutes a, a very large uh, segment for our for our product fmcg also we do uh, quite a lot as right said by uh, uh, mr again raj about the unilever model so there are a lot of fmcg model uh, companies who are going direct to customers consumers and we are catering to that apart from that for the b2b models are still available uh, which are we are doing it uh in terms of the contactless deliveries uh, uh unfortunately uh, unlike the e-commerce where everything is on a mobile phone here the customer wants the physical copy because there are uh, payment links to it and there are there are uh, legal things which are linked to it so uh, they want a physical copy of the if not a physical at least the e pod has to be there the, the, the signed copy of the pod has to be there we have tried we are we are still trying to eradicate that during the covid period we tried but still the system doesn't allow in a business scenario where they want a physical copy or a e electronic uh, pdf copy of the pod so what we are doing is now at the time of delivery we are capturing the pod signed pod uh, through the mobile devices and we are uploading it with the customer can retrieve and but again what happens the quality of those pictures are not always great so with what we do is we again rescan it at our centers and that gets overwritten so with that what we are doing we are ensuring at least the digital copy is available even if it gets misplaced in the courier and and in the transit still we have a digital copy at the first at the last point when it is getting delivered and we capture that apart from that of course digital payment is is a, is a very Uh, common thing nowadays so that of course we are doing it uh, we have tried with the sms uh, model also but it's still not that prevalent in the b2b scenario because uh, uh, the dispatch person or the receiving person doesn't want to receive too many sms so that becomes a challenge in the b2b scenario so uh, primarily those uh, are the unique things in a, in a B2B scenario, which generally don't don't get talked about because we are talking too much about the e-commerce nowadays, but there are different inherent challenges which we have in in a last mile, and of course with the fuel cost going up, that's a big challenge because uh, the EVs are still not uh, that prevalent in the B2B scenario because the capacities are of those vehicles are still limited. Uh, so we are waiting for more technology to come in where we can adopt. EVs and and try to optimize our cost uh, in the last mile delivery. To to sum it to sum it up, basically, B two B challenges are different. There are there are uh, traditional things which are still continuing in the system. There are modernization which have happened, but still there are traditional things which we have to maintain, by which we are not completely able to digitize the whole end to end process. There are still gaps in terms of where we have to have physical touch points. Thank you, Mr. Rajiv. Uh, I think uh, clearly, I think the challenges in B two B, B two C are different, and I can only imagine the pain which uh, you must be going through because of the fuel prices, and the fact that you cater to B two B customers would typically be very, very cagey by looking at price increases. Uh, uh, so I think uh, the point which you made was a very interesting one. Uh, one on uh, uh, e-commerce, uh, on or sorry, e electric vehicles. Uh, Uh, i will now move on to dr amitabh saran uh, who represents uh, or is in the business of uh, looking at electric vehicles uh, so today uh, dr saran uh, that is lot of focus on evs from the government side and lot of states have also announced incentives to drive uh, uh, ev adoption in the last couple of months uh, we are also seeing that especially in three wheelers uh, segment for last mile distribution that is some traction as far as the evs are concerned concretely we have got this concept of esd which is gaining a uh, lot of traction in the indian context as well which is driving companies to uh, look at ev adoption so how is alti green helping logistics companies and end customers go electric and go up the sustainability ladder 
how do you think the uh, future is going to shape up how has been the response to your products uh, and lastly do you also see charging infrastructure to be a hurdle when it comes to adoption of electric vehicles thank you ajay uh, good afternoon everyone and a uh, warm welcome to everyone um so very loaded question ajay and um, i think it uh, it's clear that the government uh, and the recent two day old uh, you know um, un report is a clear indication that uh, you know sustainability is an important and key um, uh, asset that every country has to build otherwise uh, you know the future is very clear the writing is on the wall as far as alter green is concerned over the last 8 years uh, yeah as a startup we've been around for the last 8 years we realized that if we want to bring change into india and the emerging markets the first thing that has to be done is to realize that our main competition is from fossil fuel vehicle not from other electric vehicles so you can't bring in something from another geography and expect it to operate in the uh, in the scenarios in india if you have to make a sustainable difference in our country or in the emerging markets and when i say emerging markets i mean south asia africa and south america um we need to make sure that the solutions are built to the differentiated needs of the geography and i think some of them have been alluded to in the past but the larger one with respect to the environment whether it is water logging whether it is potholes dust pebbles unprofessional driving behaviors i you know people may differ but i have not come across a last mile delivery guy who's been to driving school ever they start off as uh, you know chotu wiping the um, the vehicle and then they graduate to becoming a driver one day right so nothing wrong with it but that's the reality so until we can build a vehicle that can cater to this reality it will not make a sustainable difference yes you will have vehicles we've had uh, good electric vehicles in this country from back in 2001 we had e rickshaws in this country for the last 5 or 6 years and and a million and a half of them it's not that we've not had electric vehicles that have generated employment for people but if you want to make a sustainable difference i come back to this you have to create something that is built for the needs of this geography it doesn't matter if you're bringing it from china or from japan or europe or us it has to be built for these countries needs so first of all it's the infrastructure and what you build for it the second is an understanding of the usage of a vehicle i think in traditional fossil fuel vehicles you had a one size fits all you know you create a vehicle by weight and say that this is a one ton vehicle the two ton vehicle the four ton vehicle you know that's the traditional uh, thing but when it comes to last mile it's being made very clear that the deliveries are more volumetric based right it's not so much about the dead weight as much as it is the packaging that goes along with it and hence you know different application usages are coming out whether it is uh, you know ultra fast and fresh where you're constantly delivering something coming back to the depot delivering coming back to the depot versus carrying you know an entire truck load and going somewhere and then dropping it off at multiple stops so there's a change in applications and hence now electric vehicles will have to be built cater to these needs so the important thing from an electric vehicle perspective has to be number one the building blocks you mean the motors the controllers the electric all the electric system you know um the display clusters the all the electronics and the software that sits in it has to be built for this need which means that uh, you know you have to make it ip67 you have to make it something that can withstand a 30g shock you know that's the kind of thing that uh, day to day anything that is considered abuse anywhere in the world is considered to be a day to day normal scenario in india so we need to first do that number two electric vehicle companies will have to create platforms will al which allow many versions of many variants of products that can be given according to the needs of each of these verticals this one size fits all i believe is not very efficient when it comes to electric mobility because we are still constrained by the battery pack you know batteries continue to be expensive the government of india is helping a lot state government subsidies are helping a lot but you'll be surprised that uh, over a period of time the kind of energy densities that have increased and the prices of batteries that are coming down globally 
we are certain that there is going to be a parity in this even today on a total cost of ownership basis um, there is a 30 to 40% benefit that a customer get if he moves to evs from our perspective we are focusing on that we have 26 global patents granted on the technologies that we have created so far so everything from the first motor the first steel lamination that goes into a motor to the final vehicle that rolls out of polytechnic it is almost 100% domestic value add why i say almost is because india doesn't make cells or battery packs india doesn't make microprocessors because we don't have fab plants yet semiconductor fab plants so those are the only thing that we need to import the rest is something that is domestic value add and we cater it very um, specifically to india's needs as far as charging is concerned we realize that you know we can't wait till ubiquitous charging becomes a reality in this country and hence we've got to make vehicles that can charge on any of these 220 volt sockets that are available across country now i'm not saying that i expect that every kholi wala will be in a position to charge his Uh, his vehicle but at the same time when i'm catering to the organized b2b or the unorganized b2b the smaller fleets they do have the opportunity of being able to charge it we've created battery packs that have been arai tested for 181 kilometers to a single charge i know with abuse with overloading with everything that comes with last mile transport in india you will still be able to get 110 120 kilometers on a single charge and that all comes from the same premise that we started we are not in the transportation business we are in the peace of mind business i need to make sure that my vehicle is constantly being tracked so uh, just like we heard about here technologies our vehicles are completely connected all the time through telematics which is inbuilt into it whether it is for our components whether it's for the vehicle whether it's for the battery pack so that's how we believe that we've been able to take care of not just india's needs but also from a you know charging perspective uh, to make sure that as the charging infrastructure goes we will still be in a position to make sure that our vehicles remain relevant today they can be charged on any 220 volt socket tomorrow they are capable of getting charged through fast charging infrastructure that is main that is that is coming about so i think net net um uh, it's important for all ev players in this country to realize that fossil fuel is our competitor it's not other ev players we don't have to compete and say mini motor 8 kilowatt your motor is 8 and a half kilowatt it doesn't make a difference ultimately it will be can it compete with the nearest competitor which is diesel does it have that kind of uh, um uh, you know staying power over 130 year old technology that has been around has catered to the needs of each of these geographies i think that's the value add that we bring about and we seem to be doing fairly well in that today we have customers across the country we are eligible to sell in 14 states most of the e-commerce fmcg companies have already become our customers we operate through both the dco model as well as um through and the 3pls who work with us um, um the vehicle financing warranties um, you know all that has been made available there are challenges there's no doubt about it it's taken us 8 years to get here but we are focusing on fundamentals and saying that is what will make the difference so rest my case uh, thank you dr saran and i think uh, uh, indeed encouraging to know that uh, you are able to deliver 110 120 kilometers uh, uh, in the last mile so i think that is possibly reasonably enough to really satisfy uh, uh, the last mile uh, uh, operator uh, i will go to uh, Uh, next to mr uh, abhijit sen gupta uh, so in last mile on time delivery and uh, even maybe in certain instances before time delivery becomes very critical therefore accurate eta predictions faster turnaround time increased supply chain visibility all of these are very critical to meet the demands of the last mile uh, customer uh, how do you how does your technologies address these challenges we heard uh, solaiza speak about some uh, how uh, your technology solutions in her presentations uh, also uh, if you look uh, at the culture itself right i think especially in the b2c space that is increasingly an uh, on demand culture which is actually coming up where customers also looking at instant gratification uh, so if i may understand from you how is technology playing a role in all of these and how are you directly working with your customers in the last mile, last mile space yeah sure thank you um 
Um, hi everyone. Good afternoon. Um, really interesting conversation, and I was I was uh, glued to some of these uh, uh, you know the topics which was was mentioned by my previous uh, you know, the colleagues who spoke earlier. Um, I, I think we need to take a step back here uh, and, and and really understand why we talk about last mile. We talk about ET etc. But end of the day, this is about demand and supply, right? End of the day, uh, why I'm saying demand and supply because whatever our key stakeholders are trying to kind of a, a do or fulfill is basically trying to match the demand side and supply side. And the demand could be of the goods and services, which could be B2B to B2C, or it could be, you know, the, the these various, uh, um, you know, supply side, which is over a period of time are, are easily available because of the taxation or because of the various other phenomena, which could be simply the urbanization. So I picked a few topics uh, from a previous speaker. So, uh, you know, uh, I think um, Mr. Ajkin talked about uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, the urban demand, right? The, the way the urban uh, uh, landscape uh, consumes or the GDP in the urban side uh, of, of, of India. Uh, similarly, uh, there was a conversation around that how the B2B customer behaves or how the B2C customer behaves. Uh, end of the day, what, what matters is when somebody is paying a price of a goods and services, is he getting what he's asked for, for the quality he's paid for and for the timeline he's expecting. And all these businesses then has to be one scalable, repeatable and sustainable. I think that is what we are all trying to solve here. Now, if you keep this context in mind and then look at what we do is, is and where we play the role. Uh, here Technology is in this business of location for the last 30 plus years, as, as Leza mentioned. And what we have figured out, and, and we operate in um, the, you know, um, uh, over 200 countries. And what we realized in the last 30 plus years, that as the digitization happened for various processes, which include uh, turn-by-turn navigation, where a driver wants to go from point A to point B with the help of a navigation system. And that is one use case or various governments or you know, the enterprise customer would, would like to use the uh, location for their business processes. The key learning for us is location by definition is local, right? So that's, that's the kind of starting point. The second point, what is very, very important here for us to understand is in the context of last mile or the context of e-commerce, be it B2B be 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 or B2C, um, it has grown over a period of time. And especially for the last two to three to five years, it has really, really grown. And the question which you was also asked me that uh, uh, while this is growing, why, what has to get of this growth, right? In my opinion, and I, we, we have seen this, that this is the development of a platform economy where the economy becomes very platform dependent. And there are many platforms which now come into play, which are bringing the demand side and supply side beautifully managing them, giving them the best of the consumer experience. ETA is part of the consumer experience. Um, and, and, and when consumers are happy, they're placing, uh, you know, repeated orders and right. And, and what has also happened during this pandemic situation is it has, it has got depth. When I said depth or breadth, which means it's probably two years back when a food was being ordered from a probably a more urbanized area of a city or probably, you know, a, a, a city or, or a particular neighborhood of a city, which was more, you know, uh, had a certain kind of habit, but had, it is very, very different landscape now. If the orders might come from a you know, Delhi NCR region or greater Mumbai or, you know, a part of Bangalore or even uh, cities which either by definition, which is called tier two cities. So the behaviors have changed. So, and, and also what has happened is uh, those who have uh, gotten a, a flavor of such experience, they are all taking this experience back to many other cities. So the platform economy has got, got established. The technology is helping those platform economies. We also have to keep in mind the, uh, the communication because now the smartphone ownership today in India is over a few hundred millions. If I'm, if I'm not wrong, is over 300 to 400 million and probably more than that. And, and, and what has also happened is access to um, uh, uh, such, such platform is become much, much easier. So the entire ecosystem in the last three to five years has definitely, definitely have changed. Now, our play in this is, and, and in this 
this area is, is also we realize that as those kind of uh, proliferation happen, uh, that we also need to kind of step up our game, right? And understand that how do we ensure that we are digitally representing the real world, which is the, how we effectively represent the addressing for a country like India. We know that addressing is not structured. It is very landmark based addressing. Many times these are descriptions and not really addressing the way we you know, usually define addressing. Um, we, we have our database in the in, in our product and services you know, taking, uh, taking care of that. The boundary of an area, like I think one of us previous speaker talked about the postal code. Um, uh, those are very, very important um, uh, factor of a, a delivery system, right? Like certain postal codes might not get a delivery, a certain postal code might get. So all of this location information is very, very critical for ETA. Uh, it is very, very critical for middle mile, first mile, last mile. And the last mile is where is basically the experience happens. Right. That is where the consumer is taking a delivery of a goods or they are touching uh, the, the services. So it becomes very, very important. And that is also probably is um, the, the most painful part of the platform companies to deliver the experience because that is where the delivery guy will call up like, where are you? Can I come over now? And if this food, is it like more than the promised time? Uh, you know, all those, those kind of uh, challenges come into the mix. So for us, when we define these solutions, we ensure that all of these are factored in our products and services. Uh, we are a technology and a platform company. Uh, so of course we have the uh, standard, the SDKs and the APIs, which many platforms can use. We are also aware of what um, uh, was mentioned before uh, by, by Dr. Saran about uh, this this um, climate report which came up like right? it's 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 pretty damning <laughs> uh, it's not very un, you know happy report uh, but then all these efforts that the likes of Dr. Sun and, and 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 others are making that how do we ensure that those are also factored in our technology side which means that we we create routing which are charging station aware uh, because when this change management happens somebody is driving an ice or someone is first time user of a of, of electric vehicle that how do we take care of those anxieties? So all of these are factored uh, in, in our products and services. One part is very, very important uh, for, for our uh, uh, business. And I want to make this point here that this is a very complex problem. It's very important that various stakeholders should come together and, and kind of a, make it a more of a combined effort to solve the problem. Otherwise what will happen is many stakeholders will be spending money, CapEx and OPEX, trying to kind of a be solving that for themselves, but not necessarily like benefit and, and, and that's not going to be uh, sustainable. So it's, it's, it's important. Um, and, and that's why we have this platform, location platform. We have marketplace where uh, uh, those set of information can be brought in. We also have a workspace which then can be used as well. Look, I, I think we are supporting any business which, uh, which, which want these businesses to scale. It should be repeatable because it's not a one-time transaction. We all want to grow, our businesses should grow. And last but not the least, it needs to be sustainable. So keeping all of these in, in, in mind, uh, we, we are supporting um, the various platform companies. Thank you, over to you, uh, Ajay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Abhijit. Uh, uh, very heartening to know that uh, your technology is also adaptable and compatible with uh, electric vehicles. Uh, clearly the future is uh, uh, lying to, in electric vehicles. Uh, also, uh, you made a very important point on uh, more collaboration also required across industry stakeholders. We will address that point a little later in this discussion. I will now move on to uh, uh, Mr. Amrit uh, Bajpai. Uh, vehicle foods uh, uh, is a very unique business because you are looking at uh, both uh, sourcing from the farmers as well as last mile distribution. And therefore, I think uh, 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 the expectation would be to actually uh, uh, make sure that wastages are minimal, time is extremely critical. Uh, therefore, I would like to understand that uh, how geared do you think logistics and supply chain today in India is to cater to your demands? Uh, and uh, uh, how are you ensuring in this context the best experience for your uh, uh, suppliers, your customers as, uh, as far as product quality is concerned? Thanks, Ajay, and warm welcome to you at the outset. Thank you so much for inviting me on this panel. Let me divide my answer into three parts. 
so i will start with a quick brief introduction about us and then i will take you through that how we are ensuring customer expectation and best delivery experience and quality to our consumers problem what we face and expectation we have from the logistic service partners so to just give you a quick brief about about us vehicle is the largest and fastest growing agri tech company uh, driving social impact while transforming india's food economy we operate in more than 500 towns in india we source produce from a network of 70000 farmers in more than 50 regions in india and also source and exports food products globally so for us problem is that both at inbound and also at the last mile so but i will be focusing more on last mile today because the subject is there so our operation has spread across product sourcing food processing and branding marketing distribution and farm inputs uh, this gives us end to end uh, control over the food value chain we handle more than 350 tons of uh, food products per day across 20000 plus clients uh, and as i already told you from 70000 farmers our products includes includes uh, fresh uh, fruits and vegetable staples like rice pulses wheat flour dairy and value added products so before i talked about uh, on the today's topic let me give you a quick uh, brief uh, background so india is the second largest food producer of the world but has a extremely long and inefficient supply chain just to tell you it is almost 11 steps between farmer and end consumer of the food many a times in fact as a country we produce uh, more than what we consume however 30 or 40% of food is wasted before it reaches to the retail market primarily because of uh, non transparency in the flow of information and insufficient uh, supply chain network so at vehicle cool, we are exactly solving this issue through our tech integration and advanced automation i am proud to say that we have bought it down to less than 8% and our unique model of combining digital technology with physical process we call it a digital business model so now coming to your question is how we ensure the uh, produce quality and superior quality uh, delivery experience so we have a robust system of quality control we do a very close monitoring and very particular about picking the best quality produce for our consumers we have a, we have optimized our supply chain from the source to our distribution centers to a great extent i personally feel the only leg that is left with a lot of scope of efficiency improvement is last mile distribution we have acknowledged it and as last mile delivery is most time consuming and consumes maximum cost of shipping we are working with our logistics partners and bringing in new technology for making it more efficient and cost effective improving the turnaround time improving the turnaround time with uh, include smart automation and even uh, there are tech turnaround time is most crucial we hardly acknowledge but loading and unloading automation reduce lot of turnaround time for the last mile distribution so we have extensively worked on the automation of last mile optimization route optimization certainly we are working extensively we are making a continual effort to make our supply chain more digital in order to leverage the technology and optimize the last mile delivery having said that there are still many issues which need to be addressed from a logistics perspective especially on last mile uh, distribution challenges which we face are although lot of problem soleja already covered in her very comprehensive presentation and fellow panelist uh, which a uh, problem like on time delivery transparency in delivery uh, proof of delivery location tracking and uh, specifically mr bhattacharya pointed out uh, on the problem related to b2b distribution in last mile let me tell you some problem particularly which persist for us so high cost of last mile delivery inefficiencies in last mile uneven distribution especially in rural area i am happy that mr raj touched upon this uh, subject it is it does it goes unacknowledged that uh, distribution rural distribution is also a critical part of the uh, of the distribution as a business 
so most important problem which we face in this industry is the 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 industry is the perishable nature of fresh produce makes their storage transportation and self management management is a tight rope walk for us besides timely and intact delivery we have to maintain freshness and quality of the produce and unfortunately we have very limited knowledge and logistic solution of handling perishable goods there are hardly any temperature and temperature and humidity both plays important role in the distribution of fresh produce we have hardly any vehicle available in the country which has both no oem skips as a standard uh, offering and i i i can confidently tell you because i have worked for all three major commercial vehicle player in india which is tata motors volvo aishar and leland so unfortunately this is the oldest and the and the simplest supply chain which we are in but uh, sufficient attention from both vehicle manufacturer as well as logistics or this providers which it deserves is not been yet given to it uh, we particularly feel that there are lack of solution providers uh, in in this space uh, just to give you an example uh, we have ev deliveries in electronics and other e commerce uh, goods as last mile distribution but the same is not suitable for b2b deliveries for fresh categories mr amitabh touched upon and i am i am happy to see he acknowledged that application usage and the right vehicle requirement is the is a is the demand need of the r most of the vehicle which are available currently in the country can hardly carry 500 kg payload with poor steerability and stability we have tried almost all the vehicle and we still found lot of lot of issues of steerability as well as uh, of steering uh so it is very difficult unfortunately and the produce is 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 perishable so you understand what is the difficulty level for us unfortunately we have not come across a single vehicle till date i am very hopeful that some somebody will come up with the right solutions for us uh, i particularly personally feel that van model is a proven model globally closed van for me is a right solution for it and it is globally proven europe also but i haven't seen a single vehicle in india so now coming to the third part of it what is our expectation our primary expectation as a industry which i represent is to deliver on time to customer without damaging the goods as well as we deal in perishable goods as i told you so turn around time is utmost important for us temperature and humidity becomes uh, very valuable to us i expect logistics service partners to act like a solution provider instead of service providers for us we need more strategic partners in this space to reduce the food waste which is the primary objective of of our company uh, they can work with us and utilize technology to de develop customized solution we are very open to it we are also an impact organization and one prominent the mentioned area of improvement is surely which i touched upon is ev capable of handling loads particularly to b2b and also perishable category right solution for our fresh food supply chain rather than standard generic solutions we are looking for uh, in nutshell logistics partner have to be agile flexible and willing to offer solutions rather than standard offerings logistics partner need to focus on their digital fitness most of panel fellow panelists has touched upon this subject and cost efficiency asset productivity and innovation if they want to meet the changing expectations ever evolving expectation ever demanding customers which we have now building and refining these and other capabilities and then bringing them to scale across the enterprise will be the key translate the strategic into the everyday affair for us thanks ajay yeah thank you amrit i think it was uh, indeed a very uh, uh, frank remarks uh, made by you and in a way the remarks which you made actually sets the context for the next round of discussion uh, and i would request all the panel members to keep it brief uh, uh, maybe just to about 2 to 3 minutes Uh, so i would uh, given the context which has been set by all the esteemed panel members i would like each one of you to list down what do you think is that one major challenge which you feel is are in the last mile space today uh, what could be the solution for the same and in a way does the solution also 
bring about a potential opportunity. Uh, and secondly, there is also a lot of uh, a feeling amongst market participants that uh, maybe there is a way to collaborate better as an industry uh, because this industry is also very opaque in the way it works. Uh, so any thoughts in this regard will be highly appreciated. Um, so I would uh, like uh, to go one by one. We can begin with uh, 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 Mr. Rajkiran and followed by Mr. Rajiv uh, and Dr. Amitabh in the same order, if it's fine. Sure. Thanks, Ajay. So the biggest challenge for last mile as an industry is one, how do you make money? I think that's the only challenge anybody has. Uh, how long the startups will burn the money funded by PE? Let's see. I don't think we are on a successful, sustainable model building as long as we subsidize this entire network. So that's the challenge. The solution, it's not easy. It will take a long, long time. It's a very large uh, problem where the role of policy by government and the government itself will be the fulcrum for the private enterprise. So make no mistake, no private body can solve this problem. How do you solve? We create what WWW was for all of us, that is the internet. We create a platform which is addressing a standardized, so what Abhijit mentioned in terms of collaboration, standardized location mapping, so that addresses are plotted. This is all Indian context, by the way. We have a standardized tax regime. We have a standardized technology platform, pretty much like the way iOS is for application developers. We have a standardized last mile delivery vehicles, whether it's alternate fuel or electric vehicles or hydrogen or whichever be the model, because you need to have some standards and finally compliances. There are a lot of compliances out here, which we are not touching up. So this is what we call as a standardized ecosystem. The problem is how do you make money? Thus, private enterprise or even government can develop what we call this competitive advantage by adopting or customizing that. Because end of the day, each industry, each consumer, customer has a different requirement. And that's where the customization and thus creating a competitive advantage will come. You all need to remember that last mile is a competitive advantage for each brand. And that's where the brand is made or brand dies. So with this, I end that this is something which we all should think about on these platforms. Finally, if you were to optimize, for optimization, find a way how you can make money. And automatically, optimization is a subset of trying to make money. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Raji. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Making money always is always a challenge in business. <laughs> uh, well, uh, in the last mile, uh, what we see today, I think, apart from making money, of course, that's always a challenge. I think people is definitely a big challenge. Uh, now, people, I'll put it in a few buckets. One, of course, in, is the talent uh, pool in terms of the capability. The second part is in terms of their retention of those people. And third part is in terms of the continuous training and, 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 and keeping them motivated. So these are the three buckets. And in fact, you can add the fourth bucket is also the aspirational uh, Thing which is going up of this entire uh, community of the delivery team. So, so people actually play a very important role. None of the riders or, or the delivery man are consistent in one company. This, and because they are on kind of a off-roll kind of a job or, or on a on a per piece delivery basis, they are uh, employed. And particularly in e-commerce or on, on demand services, these are incentivized again. <clears throat> thanks to the PE investments. So they are in incentivized. And, and uh, the moment you take away the incentive, they shift loyalty from one company to another company. So, uh, so that's the biggest challenge in terms of retaining those people. Now, for example, you, you, you get a, a set of people to be 
there and then you train them, you develop them, you put them on the field and then the other company gives the incentive, a, a slightly bigger P, P guy comes and pays a little more and the whole gang shifts over there. And that's how, what happened between, for example, Swiggy's and Zomato's of the world or, or even uh, e-coms and uh, delivery. And so that's, that's what is the biggest challenge what is happening and having now, the moment you have change in people, there's a, there's a change slightly in the consistency. Because although the technology helps in maintaining the consistency, but still the human element is still there. So that consistency comes into a major challenge. And particularly in a B2B scenario, it is more uh, severe because it is more human-driven uh, approach because the relationship with the, with the, with the depot, depot in charge or the guy who is receiving the uh, consignment is, is very, very challenging because what happens is if you don't have a real relationship build up over a period of time, uh, your deliveries might take a backseat. Means he will put you on hold and take deliveries of others. Your vehicle is stuck up for one hour, two hours. So your entire planning goes for a toss. So I think one, the solution part of, of this is, of course, uh, uh, you we, we, what we try to do is have more long-term uh, association with these kind of vendors where we uh, take care of them in a, in, a, in a more pragmatic manner and ensure that the, the retentions are higher because we are still comparatively less uh, prone to the PE environment on this uh, driver or the rider uh, coaching part of it. So we are a little more... Uh, uh, better off comparatively in that the e-commerce segment. <clears throat> so we really take care of these uh, aspects, the softer aspect of it. A lot of training goes into these people. And of course, then supporting with the technology so that we are able to measure the performance, measure the productivity of these people. And then wherever intervention needs to be done has to be uh, taken care. In fact, I always say that the most important person in our company is the delivery person. So that's that's where the uh, mantra lies. Thank you, Rajiv. Uh, uh, Dr. Saran, would you like to give your thoughts? I'll just keep it brief. Uh, I think the one thing from an OEM perspective, and this is coming from a vehicle manufacturer perspective, if we all agree that startups have a role to play in the EV disruption that is ongoing uh, versus the incumbents, I think the important thing that we will have to realize is also to create a favorable financing, a vehicle financing, vehicle leasing environment that allows even startups to participate in it. How and the structures and all that can be determined. It's, uh, I think this fear of, uh, you know, oh, startup, uh, I don't know if they're going to be around or not and those kind of things. I think they can be allayed, um, but I think there has to be a little bit of opening over there um, in the traditional, uh, you know, financing companies and all that. We are already seeing headway over there, but I think if we were to see a little more opening over there, I am certain that there'll be a lot more OEMs and a lot better vehicles that you will start seeing over there. Right now, that becomes a very big constraint. I'm not talking about raising investment to create the vehicle. That anyway is a problem. I come from the software domain and I know the difference between uh, you know manufacturing company versus a software company. Uh, but that aside, uh, once you have the vehicle, once you've spent all the time and energy in making it, how do you get it financed? so that it can be made available in the market, especially if you have so many variants. Like I mentioned, you will have a lot of variants that will be meant for different applications. So it becomes increasingly difficult. I think that is one area where if we need to focus on and the government can help in that, if private, uh, the banks that are there, the institutions over there, I think it will make, it will go a long way in, in accelerating the adoption of EVs. Thanks. Uh, Abhijit, your thoughts, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I'll keep it brief as well. So um, there's one challenge which I definitely see is the uh, the problem of scale. Uh, with all these operations, uh, which is in the last mile uh, operation side uh, for the platform companies and the various stakeholders and the operators, uh, and, and, and how do they repeat uh, the, the experience, right? It, it's not just one time because making money, uh, being profitable, uh, it will it, it, those those goals will not be achieved unless until this business is a repeatable business and it can scale. So that is very very goal is very very clear and and, and I also like uh, the people aspect of it as well because as the the business grows, 
uh, the last mile is still not automated still is being uh, there's a human element to that last mile um so the scale and, and being repeatable is, is very very important um and and how do we solve this and 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 um, the, the solution side of things look this is a very, very complex problem to solve I'll, I'll admit that and when i say it's a complex problem because uh, we are trying to from our perspective we are trying to you know um, represent the real world in a more digital fashion so we are trying to replicate uh, exactly the same way uh, in digitally the way the real world exists and and to keep in mind in india these patterns uh, are probably don't exist be it addressing pattern or a street name pattern etc cetera, etc cetera, especially talking about the uh, the delivery side of things what we do though is is ensure that we look at at various layers we look at okay how do we address uh, a particular city and how do we go about getting and creating those kind of data also uh, i do there yeah, and what we realized and and i mentioned uh, earlier as well that it's a platform which needs to be created because we can plug in the set of information which can solve the product problem and that's why we have this, uh, this here location platform we have a marketplace if someone has that data which they own and they want to monetize it that's also possible through that marketplace and that is going to help many other stakeholders that's one point number one we also have a side which is the workspace side which then can use of the data which we already have or the other data side so it's a ecosystem play we are creating that ecosystem from a solution perspective uh, and and various points which were made by uh, this previous panelist uh, I, i believe can be have you know solved if we can you know work together uh, as a ecosystem thank you yeah amrit lastly i think uh, if you can touch about maybe the specific you highlighted the challenges in very great detail if you can uh, highlight uh, maybe Uh, spend a minute on speaking about how do you think the industry can collaborate because i think that will become very very critical if we have to really solve this uh, fix fixing issue no oh, thanks ajay i will be very crisp in this because all fellow panelists has covered most of the point i we see a greater horizontal collaboration is already happening specifically in last mile delivery but actually it is hampered by inconsistencies currently and i feel higher level of efficiency could be achieved by more consistent standards defined through the tech enablement and increased collaboration let us build an ecosystem before i finish i think i would like to touch upon one of the important aspect i think we missed it we touched upon it but i would certainly like to say let's go beyond urban and look at rural geographies where more than 70% of indian population stays uh, while the numbers are huge the density may not be there hence from food distribution perspective four wheeler cv we discussed a lot in today and in most of the panels where i go they, we only talk about four wheel cvs and distribution uh, i think it will not suffix the the requirement and the viability when it comes to rural areas it is necessary to also concentrate on developing robust two wheeler evs which can be used as last mile distribution we are already seeing all food deliveries to our homes are done by by two wheelers whether it is swiggy zomato or dunzo all are doing fabulously well so i think we should also explore this this is an unexplored area it will not only help us to suit to the urban terrains but it certainly it will create a larger impact on the rural livelihood also yeah i think what you told amrit partly actually uh, uh, is consistent with dot what dr saran also mentioned i think yes, uh, yes. solutions which are customized to the india specific issues and challenges Correct. Correct. Uh, with this i would like to thank all the panel members for their time and i would uh, uh, and their very very relevant views uh, i would now like to uh, invite bala to uh, really put forth some uh, questions uh, to the panel members and i can see that there are some questions which are on the chat window Yeah, you are right. Uh, thank you again from my side to all the panelists. Uh, really, really thought-provoking and engaging discussion. A um, lot of interesting points that came out. A um, lot of points obviously have a lot of scope for much more detailed discussion, but we are constrained by time. Uh, we would take up some questions. Probably, I'll try to direct them specifically to some of the panelists. If anybody else wants to answer, please feel to share your views as well. Uh, I would like to start off with a very uh, interesting question, broad, but you can share your views on the same uh, panelists. 
how would our experts define the perfect last mile distribution vehicle of the future considering the indian conditions can we start with our logistics uh, representatives mr raj and mr rajiv mr rajiv yeah mr rajiv yeah uh, i think i touched upon this subject a bit uh, so for b2b uh, the issue is in terms of the carrying capacity so uh, currently the vehicles available are 500 kg uh, payload now 500 kg payload for a b2b is a very small uh, uh, size and 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 the the economics doesn't work out in such small uh, quantity so here we we are looking for say about 800 kilos to about 1000 kilos kind of a uh, uh, payload breaks so then then uh, that actually optimizes the uh, the overall delivery because If you see normally in 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 a B two B scenario, the average weight is about 150, 175 kilos as the range, uh, and sometimes of course also with 200 kilos, depending on the company and the kind of products you are carrying. So with that kind of thing, if you do only five stops delivery or six stops delivery, it will not cater to the cost. So we are looking for something about a ton. then moving on to the next segment which could be about about 3 tons or 3 and a half tons that that's the uh, progression we'll be looking for uh, our vehicle and of course then the long haul as again i said that cost that's the major part of our cost uh, for a uh, end to end uh, supply chain is the mid mile the so where uh, definitely the technology is still uh, coming up in terms of having long distance uh, heavy payload trucks uh, on on evs Sir, would you like to share? Yeah, uh, one line. We need a Tesla in the commercial vehicle space. The driver relaxes. We treat the driver the way we should have always treated him as a human being. He listens to music. Delivery is happening the smoothest. So we need Tesla in the commercial vehicle space. Thank you. Interesting. Very comprehensive. Uh, Amit, I'm sure uh, you'd like to have some music. No, oh, I mean I'm in the OEM space. I listen to what people are saying. We are engineers. Uh, we develop solutions for them. We have solutions in two-wheeler, three-wheeler, and four-wheeler small cargo. But we focused uh, very squarely on the three-wheeler delivery first. But as the markets expand, technologies are available. Uh, Tesla can be made. How affordable it can be made, uh, and when it gets made for Indian needs, trust me, it will look like just the vehicle that you're driving today, <laughs> even though. We'll call it a Tesla. You will not be able to sleep. Thank you, Rajesh. Come in. Affordable tech. <laughs> Tesla, we want. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no ideal vehicle. I think there will be many, many ideal vehicles for different yeah. needs and different verticals. My second to Amita is, uh, I think we have to. There will be no perfect one solution. We have to see it more on segment and application based. and uh, there will be vehicle which are required for volumetric application there will be vehicle required for 30 minutes delivery and there will be vehicle required for perishable there will be vehicle re required for in fact just to tell you there is a huge temperature difference where when we carry a onion and a and a banana so so it cannot be a same temperature and same humidity so i think it will be more future is more when we focus on application and segment as a last mile delivery and focus there Absolutely, I think application and uh, specific solutions probably is the need of the hour. Right. Um, just just to recall, our last panel discussion with Here Technologies was actually on EVs. It was focusing on EVs. Um, we had Abhijit and Sulayas as well with us. Actually, today's discussion is very very similar because we are talking a lot about EVs. That actually shows how relevant EVs are for last mile delivery. And I'm saying this because a number of questions that have come in are actually related to EVs. So I put a couple of them that came in. There's a lot of talk about EVs in last mile delivery, right? What do the likes of TCI and V Express have to say on this? Have you tried to deploy EVs for your last mile operations, and what is your take on EV adoption? I did notice Mr. Rajkiran has answered, uh, and I typed off the answer. Can you also share this for the larger audience, uh, Mr. Rajkiran and Mr. Rajiv, if you can share your experiences on the ground level? Sure. So, uh, first on terms of why people are talking on EV because we all uh, get uh, consumed or subsumed by whatever is the talk of the town, like e-commerce or EV. So we all get swayed by that. But the fundamentals always are to be addressed to make money. Coming to the question, our take on EV is not right now. 
the point is that on the commercial side it's not proven and as i mentioned uh, there has to be an ecosystem and ev is a component in the last mile delivery ev is not a solution so let's not make a mistake that ev is not going to solve a last mile problem there are too many aspects in the entire value chain and right from the demand side to the supply side so ev is a small segment which is going to bring in the you know address the problem of climate change which is a big piece coming to us we will wait and watch because as a company currently we will address what the customer wants now which is southwards cost okay people don't want to pay so obviously we will have to address that and ev typically cost four to five times we are talking lot on total cost of ownership that will that has to move from an excel sheet to ground currently unless the oil marketing companies create the ev charging points we are not going to have what we call as the penetration now it's a chicken and egg story as a company we will have to see do we address the present what the customers want in the short term or do we address a long term it's a balancing act we don't want to put our neck out by saying that we're going to have an entire fleet of ev because there are stakeholders who say i want to survive today we all need to remember that the pandemic has taught a lesson that let's survive today for a better future let's not forget that so the better today is where a person makes money and gives it off to all the stakeholders and ev as a company we see is a long term solution not a short term the costs are high to buy a ev vehicle to maintain and run it it's not so easy so this is our take on ev Uh, a point here, but we are looking at alternate fuels, which is blended ethanol. But by the way, uh, in the industry, we have not been able to prove more than ten percent blending. But that also, when you see at the cost point, with fifty percent fuel being a cost of a route or a trip, it starts going out of the system. Twenty percent blending of ethanol into diesel is not really working so efficiently yet. So. alternate fuels is what we see as a first step before we jump into a large scale adoption of ev thank you uh we just uh, try some evs uh, in some of the city like delhi uh, and, and bangalore uh, but uh, the cost is still quite prohibitive and as i said uh, that the payload is is a constraint so with the cost uh, of buying the vehicle and the payload we carry uh, the economics doesn't work out so we tried few of them but we are just waiting uh, for the next stage to come in uh of course there are many customers who are asking us for uh, the the carbon footprint uh, uh, or the carbon uh, this uh, payback kind of a thing from us so some of the customers who are concerned about this they are talking about uh, reduction in the carbon footprint uh, so wherever we are able to provide like cng operated vehicles and and ev vehicles so we are being declared as a preferred uh, vendor in those particular routes or those particular lanes so there are certain customers who are adopting this uh, this stance uh, now coming in terms of uh, the the other options what we are looking is we are trying to convert in the shorter routes uh, the the mid mile shorter routes we are trying to convert into cng vehicles so that's the immediate solution available Uh, ethanol also we are trying out, but uh, again availability is a problem because there are certain sectors, certain states where it is more predominant, and there is a lot of inhibition from the uh, from the vendors, uh, vehicle vendors in terms of adopting because their take is the engine maintenance is very high, so still the adoption is very at a very pre premature stage uh, of uh, ethanol blended uh, diesel. And, and the economics are still yet to be seen that how it will be feasible um, but at, but yes we as a company we are trying various options because as uh, rightly said that it constitutes about 40 to 45% of our overall cost uh, in terms of the fuel component in in all, from the first point to the last point uh, we consider about that uh, cost and and that's a very significant cost so we are able to make some improvement in that that helps us in in our economics so we are open for technologies we are open for uh, these kind of uh, evs and other alternate fuels 
but uh, we'll have to see how it works out economically. And at the end of the end of the day, we are trying to do this for economics and, of course, for environmental sustainability. Thank you, Mr. Rajiv. Uh, Amrit, did you want to add something on this? Uh... No, certainly. If, uh, we are an impact or impact organization, as I told you earlier, also and. In fact, I personally feel that we should leave this planet much greener and cleaner for our next generations. So EV is the only solution. But uh, I still feel the owners lies with the manufacturers. So to give the right solution. In fact, we are the only one company who started bike uh, uh, deliveries of e-vehicle hero uh, five years back. And in fact, we are working extensively with FM Logistics. So my 5% of fleet is EV. But still, we I still feel that maturity has to come into the industry to get the right solution of vehicle we are open to it anybody who we would be more than happy to partner with anybody to in fact develop right ev vehicle for fresh industry and uh, and both invest time and energy with a partner to find the right solution for it thank you amrit uh, amitabh i have a, a question you can answer from the other side of the table, right? I'm sure you would want to answer this as well. But how has your experience been? There's a question specifically for you. Which are the cities you currently operate in right now? And can you also name some of the customers and how their experience has been in using your EVs? Have they been able to experience success and cost economics? What is your experience? Um, so we are um, eligible to sell in 14 states in India. We are currently um, selling in six right now, um, and the, the most important markets. Again, uh, we've realized that the market is very segmented uh, when it comes to an OEM. It's uh, organized B2B, then there's unorganized B2B, and then there's a B2C. And hence, we are working right now only in the organized B2B, last mile e-commerce, FMCG delivery, um, groceries, those kinds of things. And we are working with our B2B partners and ensuring that we grow along with them. So they talk about other cities that we need to be and we will set up service centers and, and you know, point of presence over there. We are a startup. So I'm not saying that we have presence in, um, you know, 800 dealerships across the country. No, we don't. Um, I don't know if we ever intend to do that, but at least in the geographies that we want to be present, we will be there. Um, like I said, we made a vehicle ground up. This is probably the first time that a vehicle has been made ground up for a specific purpose. It's not a passenger vehicle that was converted to cargo or something like that. It's been made. There are fundamental differences. You can go to altigreen.com. You can see how the vehicle is, is proven to be uh, made for India. And hence, at least up until now, that's wood and everything. Um, uh, everything that we are hearing is, is, is positive. Yes, there are teething problems. I will not be, I'll be the first one to um, uh, say that uh, we've not had issues. But considering that we have the, uh, the software stack and being able to monitor each and every vehicle at 300 millisecond rates and those kind of things, we are trying to give that peace of mind experience. And to a large extent, uh, we, are being, uh, we are being successful in it. And it shows up from the repeat customers that we're getting. Like I said, the customers remain the same. It's typically driven through the three PLs and the DCOs that the vehicles are put in the market, but the, the top rung of the customers, uh, same names, the Amazon, the Flipkart, the, I mean, the, the standard people, the, the Zomato. So they're uh, standard customers. Of course, the delivery, my customer would be a three PL, a third party logistic provider who would then uh, source the vehicle from us and then deliver it. Thank you, Amitabh. Yeah. Um, I'd like to keep the last question for Abhijit um, on the other side as well. Um, on one side, we have the e-commerce players, the larger ones like the Amazons and the Flipkarts, uh, more, more uh, organized. And on the other side, we have a highly fragmented uh, sector, you know, um, more so within the last mile delivery space as well. So how do technology service providers like Share Technologies reach out to small and medium-sized logistics service providers and support them with your solutions. How has your experience been in India until now? Yeah, so um, a couple of points. Hello, uh, there's a couple of uh, um, you know uh, answer uh, points to mention. So one is that how do we work with uh, a large players and then small players? I mean, for us, um, uh, what it matters is is that how do we kind of uh, provide the solution is more. A standard way. When I say it's more standard way, in terms of these APIs are very standard. 
the SDKs are very standard. It works in India, for example, um, and it takes care of the uh, the challenges and the nuances um, as a, as a landscape in terms of the addressing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, are, are are concerned. So so for for us, the largest uh, not so large for us is pretty much same because their area of operation and scale, etc., will be very very different. Um, we also work with various uh, partners who we call them as solution partners or, or uh, you know, uh, system integrators. So we the work with us, they create their solutions on top of our products and services. And then, then, then they go to markets. So from a go to market strategy perspective, of course, we work with the large set of customers uh, directly. Uh, we also work with um, many other uh, customers through our partners, which we call them a solution partner or a system integrator. Um, and because sometimes what happens is maybe some specific requirement comes across, which are then uh, served by our solution partners. Our experience has been in India so far uh, has been very, very encouraging. And, uh, um, you know, we are in India for the last 12 years. Um, a significant number of our employees are based out of India. We are based in three cities in India. So we understand the landscape. We understand how these the requirements are. Uh, so, so we are able to kind of work with them. Thank you, Abhijit. Thank you. Some more questions. We'll probably have to pass, give them a pass for now, and probably come back later with responses to the to the audience who put forth the questions. So I think we have well passed our ninety minute mark for the session. Um, thanks first to Sulaiza for setting the context with a very very interesting presentation for all of us and a truly insightful and thought-provoking discussion, I would say. Thank you to all our speakers, Mr. Rajkiran, Mr. Rajiv Bhattacharya, Mr. Dr. Amitabh Saran, Mr. Abhijit Gupta, and Mr. Amit Rajpai for bringing in a diverse range of views on this very, very interesting topic. And um, I think the, the final word uh, will be a big thanks to Ajay as well for smoothly and you know excellently moderating this discussion, taking it in the right direction, and also you know completing it within the given time span. And as we discussed, I think we are all part of a, a single ecosystem. And I think uh, from our side, as part of the media, we'll be happy to do our bit as well. We will have some interesting coverage of this, this of this session actually across our platform. This has been a very, very interesting discussion. So stay tuned for that as well. And for uh, our attendees, you will receive an email with a, a copy of the presentation that Suleiza made, along with a, a link to watch the entire video recording of this session as well. And of course, with contact details of our panelists, in case you would like to reach out to any of them for further uh, discussions. Yeah. So thank you all once again for taking time out to join us for this uh, session. And until our next session, which is actually planned for um, August 25th, you will receive details of the same. Um, goodbye and thank you all very much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.